Hello there, this is your Bible lesson for Monday, May 4th, and we are going to start today with just the big idea. So you can listen to this part, but I will have an assignment for you here in just a little bit. Um, but just listen to what we're going to be learning about in Lesson 9, which the title of the chapter is, Why Does Sin Keep Me From Knowing God? Why can't I know God if I have sin in my life? Okay, so the big idea so far, you've learned many things about what God is like. One of the most important things you learned is that God is holy. Do you remember what it means to be holy? It means that God is totally sinless. He is absolutely just and always does what is right and good. God will never do something that is wrong. You have also learned that the only true and holy God is our creator and that he created us in his image. If God is holy and if he created us in his image, then he created us to be holy like he is holy. God never intended for us to be anything less. Can you shut your door, please? God never intended for us to be anything less than holy. And if we were holy like God is holy, God would have perfect close fellowship with us as he originally intended. A holy God can fellowship only with those who are also perfectly holy. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm not perfectly holy, right? Because I have sin in my life. And so let's find out how we can have fellowship with God if we're sinful, because I know everyone has committed at least one sin and probably more than that. And so then we can't hang out with God because he's perfectly holy and he can't be around unperfectly holy people. However, being created in God's image also means that man was given a will and the freedom to choose. Sadly, the first man and woman, Adam and Eve, used their free will to make a tragic choice. They deliberately disobeyed God's command to not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Yes, Satan tempted them to disobey, but they did not have to give in to temptation. They made their own choice and they chose to disobey. Once they made that choice, they were no longer holy as God created them to be. Thus, they were separated from fellowship with God. All people born since the fall have been born unholy. Even before we commit our first sin, we are born into this world as sinners. This is really important for us to understand. We are not sinners because we sin. We sin because we are built with the tendency to disobey God. And it is our sinful nature that separates each one of us from God. Does this make you feel sad? At first, it may. But it is important to remember that God did not abandon us after the fall. Instead, he continued to provide his children with everything they needed to live on this earth. Most importantly, he also provided a plan to restore us to holiness so we can one day live eternally with him on a new earth. Instead of punishing us with eternal separation from him, he sent his son, Jesus, to take the punishment we deserve. We will study God's great plan of redemption in the next and final lesson. However, before we can appreciate what God did for us through his son, Jesus, we must truly understand how sinful we are and how our sins separate us from a holy God. We must understand the bad news before we can understand and be grateful for the wonderful good news. Okay, and I'm just going to read this little section about Mount St. Helens. Um, let's see. Have you ever seen a picture of an erupting volcano with red hot lava and clouds of steam and gas? Volcanoes form in places where the Earth's crust is thinner and the hot rock underneath can push through. Just like the whistle on a tea kettle releases pressure, a volcano can help vent the pressure and heat from deep inside the Earth. Um, sometimes the volcano erupts slowly with steam and seeping lava, like Kilauea in Hawaii. Other times volcanoes explode so violently they send a cloud of hot gases racing along the ground and throwing ash into the air. Mount Vesuvius, which erupted in A.D. 79, buried the Italian city of Pompeii. In 1883, the volcanic island of Krakatoa in what is now Indonesia erupted in a series of explosions so violently that the explosions could be heard 3,000 miles away. Krakatoa threw so much ash into the air that the sun was blocked for months, causing temperatures to fall all the way around the world. That's a big volcano explosion. More recently, in the state of Washington, not too far from us in Montana, a volcano in the Cascade Mountain Range erupted. On May 18, 1980, this was only two years before I was born, so I know that you think that I was born a long time ago, but 
in the time frame of history that was not very long ago. Okay, Mount St. Helens exploded, sending hot ash miles into the air. The eruption broke off a huge piece of the mountainside, which slid down into Spirit Lake, uprooting the forest and sending mud and debris down the river for miles. 57 people died, the, and ash was carried east by the wind into 10 other states. The volcano erupted for nine hours before finally quieting down. Natural disasters like volcanoes are part of the curse God put on the earth when Adam and Eve sinned. The Apostle Paul said, against its will, all creation was subjected to God's curse. But with eager hope, the creation looks forward to the day when it will join God's children in glorious freedom from death and decay. Romans 8, 20 through 21. God has promised the consequences of the fall will not last forever. One day he will create a new heaven and earth where his children will live with him forever in peace. Okay, so what I want you to do today is um, on your journal, page 181 is vocabulary. And I'm actually going to hold up this definition for you on the video and you can write your vocabulary down. Drum roll, I don't know if you found it yet. It's only one word, okay? So this should be pretty easy. I'm gonna hold this up and it says humility. Let's see if I can hold it still enough. Okay, I'm gonna read it for you and then show it to you one more time. Of course, you can pause your video. Humility, an attitude in my heart that I am not better than any other person, each whom is created in God's image. And we're gonna learn about a lot about humility in this lesson, there it is again. Okay, and you can pause it if you need to. If for some reason you can't get it off the video, um, you can Marco Polo me and ask me for a picture of it. Okay, let's have a fabulous Monday and I am so looking forward to seeing you guys in a few days.